Okay, so let's go over the benchmarks. Right here we have Cinebench R15 at the stock speed with the score of 2311 multi and 153 single. And then we have the overclocked 4 gigahertz setting, 2546 multi, 167 single. And then moving on to Fire Strike, and we have the stock score here with the 22,675 physics score. And then we have the overclocked result, and that's at 24,353. Moving on to the multitasking massive overload that we tried to do as much as we could, the 12 core Threadripper 1920X handled streaming, recording, and, and that's recording with AMD Relive software though, but handled streaming, recording, and well, playing PUBG all together, all at once, no problem. I mean, look at those frame times, look at the FPS. This is a, with an RX480 on high settings and it's handling everything great. CPU utilization, everything's getting used up pretty well. The OBS setting is at 3500 kilobits per second bit rate with the CPU setting of slow. Okay, slow is huge if you're gaming and streaming from the same exact system. That is massive. And the visual quality you're seeing, we, we, we did that to 1080p 60 FPS. This is awesome. So here we are, we're going to be doing a render race right now. So I have the same Raid Max unboxing video from the previous render race that I did in the Xeon Benchmark Part 2 vid. And so we're going to race my 4-core i7-3770K at 4.3 GHz to the AMD 12-core Threadripper 1920X at 4 GHz. So we got the little bit of overclock going, so let's go ahead and get that started. Oh, hey, what's up, guys? One, two, and three. Mine's, mine starts at five minutes. That's the time three minutes. Three minutes? I'm at four minutes and 20 seconds. And this guy's at already three minutes and 40 seconds, so it's over a minute faster. Okay, a little time has passed. And raw rendering, we see that we, we are 69% complete with the minute and 19 seconds to go. We're running at 4 gigahertz at about 75C at this overclock with a Kraken X62. And I'm over here at 2 minutes left, 62% complete. It's not that far behind, surprisingly. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. 17, 16, 15 seconds to go. Well, 3770K has a minute. Doesn't sound like a lot, but I imagine over a longer workload it would cut out more time. However, I'm still unsure of what's actually going on. So we've reached 100% on the Threadripper. It's finalizing. And it's done. And over here on the 3770K, we still have 30 seconds to go. And then it also has to finalize. Probably takes about another 30 seconds. So it's about a minute behind, which is not that different versus the other Xeon test that I did. But again, I'm not entirely sure everything is properly optimized for this yet. And there you have it. Uh, so this initial quick render race test shows my, the 3770K about a minute behind on a short render that's uh, produces an 874 megabyte file at 18 me megabits on the bitrate. So not sure what's going on there, but it's still improvement. And that's really what matters. Real quick, I just wanted to mention that the small improvement for the cost that this is over something less expensive, basically, um, not exactly justified, but then again, I don't know how well Adobe Premiere is geared towards this sort of workload, this sort of CPU, anything like that, you know, everybody's always saying that everything still needs to be optimized for Threadripper and Ryzen even, just in general. So I don't know if that's the case here. It's definitely an improvement, sure. Whether it's worth it or not, not sure. But everything else that the CPU offers seems to be just blowing it out of the water. And I'm sure Adobe will catch up as well.